Good morning and welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. My name's Barbara Gray from Clarity here in the UK and we're going to do a little more colouring and finish off that beautiful project that we've been working on. Is anybody there? Is anybody there apart from me? Um, Stuart's in the building with you today to answer any of your questions because our Paul's on telly as we speak at 10 o'clock. He's going live on Create and Craft. Um, he's showcasing some fabulous dyes. I mean, these lace and doily dyes are something else, aren't they? Um, just so, so beautiful. Uh, good morning, Helen. Always good to see you. Um, first of the party. Uh, yes, yeah, so here we are. And uh, I'm in the building. I'm in Clarity. We've moved the shack. If you're wondering why it looks a bit different, it's because we moved the shack from, um, from home back to the building. I'm back in the building. Um, I don't know how the people at work feel about that, but she's here. Now, Stuart, are you there? Sound is good. I just wanted to ask the question. Did we adjust? Let me let me just see. Did we adjust the the clipping? Because there's nothing worse than if we're too loud. Let me just check that the clipping is okay. Yeah. Hello. One, two, three. I won't talk too loud. What if I go down here? Boo, boo. It's not too loud, is it? Everybody happy with that? I can always turn it down and tad if I need to. Just let me know at home because I can read your your comments if the sound is too loud. Those new dyes do look fantastic, don't they? I know. Ken, good morning. Let me know if the sound is too, it's too clippy. Would you? That would be great. Okay. And other than that, let's crack on, shall we? Sounds fine to me. Good. That's good. Sound is perfect. Merci beaucoup. All right. So how are you? You got your cup of tea? Hmm? How are you? Everybody happy? Happy is a strong word, isn't it? Hmm. We had a wonderful day yesterday. I'll tell you about it when we get when we get colouring. Took a day off yesterday for a very, very special occasion. Shall we get started? Let me tell you, if you if you're new to the party, so that you know what we're doing. Just move my tea out of the way, right? So we've been looking at these colouring postcards. And during the course of the last two years, we've done lots of them, haven't we? They're so lovely. They're so lovely to colour in. We've had some really lovely sessions together, colouring sessions. In fact, I can see, bear with me, I've even got our finished projects here. Check it out. See, the nut hatches. Aren't they lovely? I mean, this is quite something really when you look at where we start and where we go and where we end up. We should be very pleased with ourselves, you know. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, so these these three um, postcard um, packs of feathered friends that have been illustrated by our friend Mel Turner I mean, these are something else, really. You know, so you can see here, for example, we've got the cockerel, the mandarin ducks. You can see set one, set one. Paul kindly wrote this out for me. Look, the mallards. I love that one. That reminds me, look, with the lavender fields. That's beautiful. The owls. So I've got my owl, my finished owl one at home because I like it so much. I really was very pleased with the way the owls came out. So the eyes have it. <laughs> We did the magpies garden birds, they're lovely, really nice. The eagles, do you remember when we did the eagles? That was pretty impressive. And then we did watercolour, because of course the postcards are quite robust in the, aren't they? The, 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 the postcard stock that we use can take water. So we used our watercolour pencils as well, which was quite lovely. Yeah, this was nice. I enjoy, you know, when you look back at all the different artwork that we've created now this is an interesting one the the hummingbirds do you remember d prepared this one for us and we went really black in the back and i want to do that this time i want to i've decided to go black in the background on on what we're working with with our funky birds the kingfishers were rather nice yeah so you know We've really, really cut our teeth, our colouring teeth on these three packs of postcards. 
They're available on our website and they're a very good price. I mean, I think hour for hour, pound for pound, it's superb. I think you get you buy two and you get the third one free anyway. And so what we're working on at the moment is the the third set. And uh, and because it's a spring and spring is in the air, we went to to this particular funky birds. And this is where I'm at. I know I'm exactly at the same place as I was when we spoke last time. And um, I, I can't tell you how busy we've been. <laughs> so I'm afraid this is where I'm at. But I'm here. And that's the main thing. And I've seen on um, on on our Facebook page on Clarity Worldwide, I've seen some of your beautiful artwork and it makes my heart sing, you know, because I'm the bus driver. I'm just here to to drive the bus. And then it's up to you how far you go on your journey. You know, I'm just throwing the ideas out there and giving you a little bit of direction. And um, and I mean, that's the whole purpose of the shack, isn't it? to to reframe our thinking stay calm yeah and so so what i thought today would be nice let me just put my other glasses on i thought during the course of the hour we could have a look at this i've got so much still to do but that's okay because you know it's you know we keep saying this it's not just about it's not just about the finished project. I mean, it's nice to have something lovely when we're finished, but it's also about the process, isn't it? It's about the the mindful process, the actual, the doing of the, the colouring rather than the finished product, if you like. So more and more I'm feeling that. So what I wanted to do was work on the back. And my, my disadvantage here is that I haven't finished the front. So I'm going to have to concentrate a little bit. What I will think I'll do just to get started, because I want to do the background in black, I'm going to take a grey. See, I've got three different greys. Well, I've got light grey, Payne's grey, and then I've got the black. And then when I get to do the blending, I'm using my blending nib, my blending pen. Okay. But what I think I'll do is just decide what classes have I got here? Do you know, I'm going to have to go to the optician. What I do, what we'll do first is we'll just lay down a grey layer where I'm going to go black. Because that way, at least I know what area I'm working on. See, this is just an undercoat, a real fine undercoat, right, of where I want to go when I do the black. So let's just do this bit here because I don't want to, I don't want to colour in the wrong part, you know. See, I've got a feeling that's supposed to be a leaf, so I'll leave it for a minute <laughs> and I'll just stick to the grey. I'll just stick to the grey for the moment. There we go. Speaking of grey, Speaking of Grey, because you know my surname's Grey, right? We've actually got a third Mrs. Grey now, because yesterday my brother got married to Sheila. I know, it was so lovely. Yeah. So, I mean, they've been dating for years. You know, Sheila, you often hear Sheila's on the design team, right? Let me just come in a little bit closer, shall I? Move in a bit closer. So yesterday was a super special day because Sheila Bradley married Steve Gray. Yeah, we had such a lovely day. It was very, very special. And made it all the more special by the fact that it was just the four of us. It was just Sheila and Steve and Dave and myself. And we went to Rochester and they tied the knot in Rochester. And it, it was just such a, you know, the, the, oh, the sun was shining. And, um, and the other thing was as well that um, they just had the Sweeps Festival in Rochester. 
So, oh, it was gorgeous. They, all the bunting was still out and the sun was shining and and people were, were sitting outside the coffee shops. I mean, Rochester is a very nice town, actually. It's a very nice town. Like, this is going to be great. It's very nice. And um, particularly nice when the sun is shining <laughs> and uh, and the bunting is out. And so we were a little early because Dave and I, Dave cleaned the car <laughs> and then we went to pick them up and um, it was just lovely, you know. It was really something else. And um, and then we were a little early because we always are, us lot, and uh, we're early birds. And so we went for a walk around Rochester and we went into the cathedral which was really nice. There was a, there was a um, an exhibition in the cathedral, so I think that was going to be great. And um, it was it was like a cascade of of etched leaves. They were all individually cut out of metal, and then and then in them it said engraved into them it said hope so there were thousands of leaves all over the floor let's see if I can find my just bear with me a minute and I'll see if I can find my photograph of it I don't know if you'll be able to see this but I imagine you will there you go look can you see the leaves all over the floor so there's the altar and then when you get in tight like closer and closer actually I did take a couple of photos a bit tighter there and as you're getting closer, you see all hope, 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 just thousands of, of, of leaves all individually cut. It's quite something. And it's going, it's, look, there we go. The leaves of the trees, a reflective memorial, a sculpt. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, Peter Walker's the sculptor. But it's going all around the country. So, um, but it's quite something, quite something. And so, um, so, but it was, it was lovely because um, we went in there and, and it, we were clearly a, a little wedding party because we all had our, our flowers in our buttonholes and that. And then, um, and the, the verger came, because you're not allowed to take photographs if you're, you can't just go in, you know, you can imagine a, like, a mob of bridesmaids coming in. And, so <laughs> the verger came and said to us, you know, usually one has to ask for permission to take photos. I said, well, it was never our intention. And she said, well, you're a small party and you're more than welcome to take as many photographs as you like here in the cathedral. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. And so we did. Look. The happy couple. Isn't it great? Yeah, so we took loads of photos. Look. <laughs> It was so nice. Oh, let me just see if I can find. Then we went outside and we took some really lovely pictures. I'm just going through quickly to find you some lovely ones. Here we go. Look, Rochester with the bunting. Isn't that lovely? Hey, there's the castle. I mean, really, really, really lovely. Isn't that a lovely picture with the castle in the background? You know? All taken on my phone. Yeah. So we took loads of lovely pictures. And then um, we, we went for a nice meal in Aylesford, which is a lovely, a lovely town near Maidstone. Well, you know, it, if you come into the open days, there's a really nice restaurant called The Hengist. So we went to The Hengist, just the four of us. Dad's not, d mum and dad were waiting patiently at home with a cake and then we went back to their house for coffee and kuchen, coffee and cake. So it was just generally the whole day, apart from being a very, very special occasion, you know, it was just calm and kind. Those it was just calm and kind. Everywhere we went, it was calm and it was kind. Parking wasn't an issue. The people were friendly. Um it was just calm and kind. See now, so now we've got our our dark, our grey laid down. So now I think I'm going to go in with a darker grey. So I'm going with Payne's grey. Let me just do the top half and then I'll think about the bottom half. Yeah. 
Yeah, so then um, we um, had a smashing day, really, just the four of us. It was the way they wanted it, you know. It was the way they wanted it. They wanted it to be just calm and gentle and intimate. And it was fabulous, really. And so Steve's first time. He's never been married before. So it meant a lot to him. And it meant a lot to Sheila, you know. They love each other very much. So it was really, it was quite, it was quite a privilege to be there, you know, and to be the witnesses, Dave and I. Steve was Dave's best man at our wedding. So they're very close. That was good. And, um, and when we were in the cathedral, see, so you just lay in another layer down. I'm going to lean on that so I don't lean on the artwork. Right, here we go. Yeah, and um, when we were, let me just go back to Stuart, just in case I need to hear or see or be told anything. Thanks, Stuart. Um, it was interesting, when we were in the cathedral, you know, I was saying that, because it was, it was so romantic and, oh, it was just lovely. Um and there were a couple of ladies, older ladies, standing chatting. And then they realized that we were a wedding party. And they were, they were commenting on the fact that Sheila and I were very color coordinated. Because um, we had like, I didn't, it was a pure coincidence. Um, but I, ha I had like a peach, peach scarf on and she had a peach jacket on. And it's just pure coincidence. Honestly, we didn't, we did not plan that. And the ladies were just saying how how lovely that we'd we'd kind of gone colour coordinated, which we hadn't, but we did. And um, and so we got in talking to these ladies, you know, and they were, and I was, you know, were we regular visitors to the cathedral? And I said, well, you know, back in the day when I was at because Rochester's our old stomping ground. I went to school in Rochester uh, on uh, Fort Pitt, which was at the top of the hill in, in Rochester, opposite St. Bart's Hospital. And so I said, oh, well, I, you know, back in the day when I was at Fort Pitt, oh, she said, the lady, I went to Fort Pitt too. So then, so then we got chatting. Who was the headmistress in her time? Who was the headmistress? She was a little older than me. So she remembered Miss Patton. Oh, no, she remembered Miss Sackett and I remembered Miss Patton. I remembered Miss Sackett because the, 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 the main hall was called the Sackett Wing. So, I, you know, from a previous headmistress. Anyway, so we got talking and we were talking about, you know, that we used to all trundle down the hill where you'd always come to the, um, the cathedral. We'd always walk down the hill in a long convoy, like a river of blue bowler hats. We used to have to wear a bowler hat. And um, we'd, we'd all traipse down to the cathedral for our annual, well, two reasons. One, it was always the lever service. We had a lever service down there every year when, when, when the oldest girls left. And we also had our carol service down there every year. So we'd have a lever service and a carol service every year. And... Um, that was quite something, you know, to go to Rochester Cathedral. Beautiful sounds. They were they were tuning the organ yesterday. It was interesting. Yes, yeah, so I was chatting to the lady, and and then we were talking about the Crimean section of the school because I said, "Do you remember when it caught when it was there was a fire?" And she did, and I said, "Well, that was when we were we were there. Then I was in the fifth form when the when the school caught fire." She said, "Oh, I remember that. That was terrible." And I told her that it was because a boyfriend had, one of the girls in our year, we were going to do the mock exams and she hadn't done her revision. So the stupid boyfriend decided, can you imagine this? The boyfriend decided to burn the papers, the exam papers, to buy his girlfriend some time. And he set fire to the blimmin' school. And it was a, it was a Florence Nightingale Crimean section where the papers were, I maybe have told you this before, 
Can you believe it? Yeah, he broke in and he set fire to the papers and the building caught fire and he torched the entire Crimean section. I know, all the hospital. It, was, it used to be a hospital before it was, you know, before it was a school, it was a fort. And Florence Nightingale worked there. Yeah, I know. So um, <laughs> that, that wasn't so smart, mate. But it, it sh so she remembered that. She remembered. See how I'm just working in layers? Sorry, I'm waffling here, aren't I? That's all right, though. We're hanging out together, aren't we? Are you working? Are you working on your colour as well? See, I'm just doing the whole area here. And then I'll go. And then when I've done this, then I'll work on the bottom part. Otherwise, we're not going to see any result here, are we? There we go. Yeah. So like I say, the whole day was was kind and it was calm. And um, it was perfect. It, 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 it really was, you know. Absolutely wonderful. Deep. And... Uh, We went up to the castle as well to get some photos. And they said, sorry, can't come in. Can't, the grounds are shut. I thought, well, I said, oh, dear. I said, well, it's, it's, um, we're just a tiny wedding party. And I just wanted to take a couple of photos. Uh, nah, sorry. I said, well, you know, we're not going near the actual building. I just like a. Anyway, I said, oh, come on, cut me some slack. Anyway, they did. <laughs> squeaky wheel, get oiled and all that. And so we were able to take some nice photos with the castle wall in the background. And that was cool. <laughs> there. So at the moment, you see, what's happened is the background, it's not dark enough to make the foreground pop, is it? You know, but we're just about to change that. Yeah. So whereabouts, so just let me have a look. And how are you doing? Are you okay? Get in there. And you all right? Car. Just coming down now. There we are. We're very busy at the moment with Paul being on TV and with me having been on TV on Sunday and having had a big sale as well and staff on holiday and staff not in the building and staff ill so it's causing a little bit of a ruction but it'll be okay i would ask you really if you're waiting on a sale order just to be patient as soon as i've finished with coloring in and hanging out with you i shall be going to help in the picking and packing area and uh, Dave's making groovy plates because obviously Steve's not in work today. He's going on a little honeymoon, which is absolutely as it should be. So we're down a man in that department as well. But that's okay. That's okay. Good God, uh, nobody's going to begrudge him a, a week's honeymoon, are they? Mm -hmm. Certainly not me. So I'm very excited for them, really. I know Dave and I, we were together for years before we got married. We lived together. But there's a big difference. There's a difference, isn't there, between living together and actually tying the knot? I think so. It felt different. It feels different. Even though I didn't take Dave's name because, well, it was just easier with the business and everything for me to stick with Gray. Um, but we're very much married. Sheila decided to take 
Steve's name, which I thought was great. And so she's a Mrs. Gray now. Sheila Bradley became Sheila Gray. So you'll have to look now. We'll have to change the banners and I'll have to make her a stamp. I'll have to make her a new stamp for the backs of her beautiful cards. Well, I think that I can swing that, Sheila. Not that she'll be. She's certainly not here today. No. Actually, if the truth be known, the poor woman's burying her best friend today. You know, life is never all where it seems, is it, eh? Yeah, her closest friend Carol died. So, bittersweet that is. You know, Sheila's got got married on one day and buried her best friend the next day. That's hard. Hmm. Funny enough, it was Carol that introduced, ironically, it was Carol that introduced Steve to Sheila. Carol and my mum, they colluded. You know? So, yeah. Life is harsh, isn't it, sometimes? Nice lady, Carol. But there you go, she's not suffering now. And it happened so quickly. It happened so quickly. Otherwise, Sheila would never have, Sheila and Steve would have moved the wedding. But it just was, it was just like, one minute she was poorly, the next minute she was gone. So, yeah. It's never as it seems, is it? Happy, sad, happy, sad, up, down, black, white. That's life, I think. Just have to go with it, don't you? Just have to go with it. But then they're going on their honeymoon. A much needed one, I should say. Hmm? Wouldn't you? So this is the grey layer coming in now. See how the... The background's starting to bring the foreground out. Mm, that works, doesn't it? And I mean, the whole idea of this also is to just relax. Here we go. Let's get into that area there. Around we go with the dark grey. So we're highlighting, sharpening the edges, aren't we? See, it's easier if you get in there with the chisel. There we are. And then move away from it a little bit. Circular motions. The trick is to work in layers. And also, and we've talked about this before, it's about... There we go. I find it easier to stay over the area I'm colouring in. There we are. It doesn't matter how long it takes, does it? I'm not, it's not a race. I mean, it would matter if I was selling this. <laughs> I certainly would make a living out of selling this. <laughs> oh, dear. See, that little area there needs to pop. Let's have a look. That's better. See? So that bird is starting to show now. So that was the Payne's grey layer now. It's important to work in, in layers rather than, especially with polychromos or the perga liners, because what happens with these pencils is that if you press too hard, you create like a sheen, like a layer, like a an oily, waxy layer. And then once you've done that, it's almost like you've sealed it and you can't you can't lay down any more depth of colour, isn't it? See, I could take a really dark blue now and I could take a really dark blue now and blend a really dark blue into the black. 
but I'm tempted to just stick with the black. See, and the pain's great. If I press harder and harder and harder, it's almost black. It's just not black, black. Yeah. So did you manage to watch Paul on telly last night at six o'clock? The dyes are something else, aren't they? They're so lovely, these lace and doily dyes. Cool. To me, they're like an essential. You know, like the doodle dies. They're a real style changer, aren't they? They're just instant card makers for me, you know. Really cool. And these the, these dyes that Paul's doing doing on telly, he's showing you on telly, to me, they're like, um, they're that type of, there we go, look. So we've got that grey now. They're that type of dye. They... They're an essential to me. They're a, they're a nested pattern dye that work around the outside, but they're they're lovely because they're you, they're delicate. You can make them very delicate, or you can make them quite um, they're quite funky as well. Not like the doodle dyes. They're really like individual patterns. These are these are lace and. What impresses me with them is the bits that are the scraps, the bits that you would throw away are so lovely. Like the, it's this again, it's the positive and the negative. More and more we look at the the art that isn't the picture itself. Like when you, you cut this out, for example, this is the bit that you're you're looking at, but it's the background that creates the interest, you know. And and with these lace dyes, it's the same thing. It's the bit that you you would normally throw away. It's quite interesting how that works. Now let's have a look. Shall we go for a black now? Let's have a look. Let's sharpen a black, shall we? Everybody all right? Are you relaxed? I'm very relaxed now. I'm very relaxed. We've got some big meetings going on at work and um, need to clear the head for that one. All good. And I'm going in with me black now. I mean, you can use you can use uh, any colour in pencils to do this. The trick is to just to get a nice smooth effect. It's get it's best to go layer on layer on layer. Here we are. Let's have a look at this now. Let's do another layer of black, and then we'll let it rest, and then we'll go again. Right. So now I've got a good sharp black going on so while the pencil's really sharp because you do need to to get that sharpness you need a really there we are let's just stay around the edge while the pencil's really sharp otherwise i have to keep sharpening it and sharpening it and sharpening it so let's outline it doesn't look so attractive but let's go around the whole image. You see what I'm doing here? Let's go round with the sharp black. That's it. And hold your pencil over the artwork that you're filling. It's like when we do pico cutting. Keep your scissors over the piece you're cutting out so that way you the reason is you can really see can't you i mean with the scissors it's it's so that you get the lovely pico v's but with this i find it a lot easier because i can really see the green area or i can see the bit that i don't want to color in whereas if i if i were turning it this way around let's just say for the sake of argument and i were putting this line in then I'm covering up the area that I want to leave. See, so while I'm on this side, I'll do this bit here. It's, I, I just find I can see better. That's all. Hey, I can see better. There we are. Okay. There. 
So pause back on telly if you wanted to see those dies and you've missed the 10 o'clock show. Um, pause back on for the last call at, uh, hopefully, stop permitting, um, at four, uh, 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. Times have changed now, haven't they? 2 o'clock. And then, there we are. So we're just going to go around. I'm using... While I've got a sharp tip, I'm highlighting the area that I want to infill with black. And then that way I haven't got to keep sharpening. There we are. That's better. Okay. Yeah, Rochester. Cool, that was my old stomping ground, really, you know. It's a nice town, actually, Rochester. A lot of history attached to it, that's for sure. There we are. But it isn't a town... Well, it certainly looked pretty. I mean, I'm sure there's some shady parts of Rochester. There always were. I know that as well. But um, but it's still a pretty town. You know, so many towns have gone gone to seed, really, you know, the high streets. But this is still a banging high street. It's still got a lot going for it. It's still working. You know, it's still a working high street rather than a, you know, so many shops shut down in, in so many streets now, in so many shopping areas. Um, but this is still, still yeah, it's still, a, you know, a, a buzz, it's still a buzz in Rochester High Street, which is quite nice. So many towns now, no buzz. And I don't think COVID helped, did it? But I think it also, it also having just had the Sweeps Festival, that makes a big difference too, you know, because all the shops have put their best foot forward, haven't they? I would have thought so, that the, the window dressings were lovely and, you know, it was just nice. Sunshine, good company, great occasion. You know, you've got to seize the moment, haven't you? There we go. Make the most of it. And then I might just sharpen my pencil a bit more to go in again. These are good sharpeners. That's it. So what are we doing next week? Well, hang on, let me just make sure the battery's all right. Yeah, we're still okay. Um, next week on Monday. Oh, yeah. So I was hoping to start a new project with you, you know. I thought we'd go to do a little doodling. And I've, I've got it in my mind that we were going to go and do a bird. Do you remember those lovely shaped birds that Dave's been cutting out? The I love them. The the 3D birds. And I'd suggested a I suggested a, a, a couple of weeks ago that we Yeah, do you know what? That looks quite good when you go when you make a really dark edge around, doesn't it? Looks quite nice too. That's something worth exploring too. You see what I mean? When you go in and put a really dark edge around that's quite good you know gray yeah it's quite stylized isn't it what i was talking about was the um you know those lovely but oh here we are look this one yeah this is something else that we're still working on okay let me see if i can show you see the bird here we are so we've got these lovely birds haven't we and i was I was thinking that I'd really like, you can get the blank shapes from us. Look, see the blank shapes? And they come, you get about a bag of refills. You get three different sizes, three different stands. There's quite a few. And the idea is, look, that they, you fold them like that and you put your message on the inside. You see, you put your message on the inside and then you, here we are. 
or you can doodle it. But I use their Ukraine flowers. They're still going strong. Ukraine set. Look. Don't forget, all proceeds go to the Red Cross on these two. So this bird, for example, we use the Ukraine stamps to decorate. And then there's a little stand. Look. Really nice. Really nice. So that's something to think about that we could. I'd like to doodle one of these birds. So if you've, you can get a pack of them from us. They're not expensive at all. Not for what you get. You've got so many options. See, the best thing about them is that they fold flat. So they're easy to pop in an envelope. They're really nice. I just think what a beautiful, they make lovely mobiles as well, you know, because you've got so many of them in a pack. There, that's pretty cool. Um, so we could make a, a project, you know. But you and I, I would really like to to doodle one of these with you, like properly with a stand for us, for our for our bathroom or our kitchen or our dresser, you know, just for us. Should we do that? So I, I'd like to start that on. I'd like to start that on Monday, and it'll probably only take Monday and Thursday. It'd be a nice project to do together, you know, a nice project to do. See, usually you can buy them and they come with stamps, which are great. This is the forget-me-not one, just beautiful stamp that you stamp straight, you know, it's just a beautiful stamp. <laughs> it's just a beautiful stamp, full stop. But it, they're lovely. The the That's how they come in the in the cut card kits they come with stamps as well so have a look online Stuart maybe you could just put up the um, put up the link so that our friends can see that but that's what I want to do I think it will be nice and even if you don't have these the shapes I'm sure that we'd be able to give you the shape of the bird if you want to cut them out see if I can get you the template and I'm shooting myself in the foot here. But, you know, by the time, to be fair, it's a lot easier to get them ready made. Okay. But we'll try and give you the shape of the bird. I think you'll find it's a lot easier if you get them ready made. It's a lot less expensive too. It's false economy to think that you could download and, um, and get the same quality. But there we go. I don't want you to feel that you can't join in. So I'm sure that we'll work that out for Monday for you, okay? Now let's have a look. Let's go to the black now. In our calm and kind quest. Um, now I've gone all the way round the outside. You see, I don't have to be so careful when I get closer to the colour, right? So I'm doing circular colouring like that. So it's quite black. There we go. Just keep turning your artwork. That takes a little time, but we'll get there. And if it's a little bit grainy and you'd like it to be super smooth, let me show you. It's all right. It's not over until it's over, right? And the other thing with this is, that it's, um, it's therapy. Let me show you, if we do this, just this area here. Oh, I feel really relaxed. I was so uptight this morning. I was sprung like a coil. I wake up well, most mornings at the moment, sprung like a coil. They're like a headless chicken. You know that, oh, so much to do. I don't know where to start. And then Dave, he's really great with me because he says, well, how about we do one day at a time? And I think, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> How about we just do one day at a time? 
And how about we make a list? And how about we just tick one thing off the list at a time? And I forget that, you know. And I wake up and it's like my my mad mind has gone back to its reset at chaos again. And then I just need somebody level-headed and kind and calm like Dave to say, how about, <laughs> how about I make you a cup of tea? And, and then we just take it one day at a time. So, and then I think, oh yeah, I forgot all about that. And isn't it funny? Talk about physician heal thyself. What do I say to you, my friends here, every single time we get together? Don't worry about everything else that's going on out there. Just worry about getting with your hands and getting out of your head and taking it one day at a time. And if it's too stressful one day at a time, well, then I say do it one hour at a time, don't I? Yeah. And then myself, I completely forget all that when I wake up and I'm straight into panic mode. Oh, got to do this, got to do that, got to do this, got to do that. And then I've got lovely Dave, who is my, he's my shack shack. He's my safe, happy and creative. And he goes, how about we just take it one day at a time? Where's that list of yours? And then I think, yeah, that's exactly right. Let's have a look at these blending nibs. My mum packs these up, bless her. We're getting these made again. That's been another mission. But that's for another day. So you've got your nibs. These are great. And then what you do is, you see, with the nibs, it smooths out the blackness. So as you start to move around, you don't have to press hard. But what happens is it moves the pigment around and it smooths it out. And you should see the difference as you start to... I've just got this, this particular nib is just for the black. Right? And what it does is it pushes the, the blackness around and smooths it out for you. And it also... When you do this, you'll see it sets the, the layer for the next layer. So it's like a pen. I, again, I, I feel, you know, it's, very, it's, very, it's a very good idea to always work on this side because you can push the delicate nib right into the area you want to smooth. Right? So you smooth it all out again. And then when you've done that, see it's smoother on that side it's, and it's shinier as well. If I, if I look at it from the light point of view, I can see where it's shining now, right? But it doesn't mean I've created a, I haven't created a, a wax sheen at all. This would be lovely for putting the next layer down on. So this is great for colouring. This is also good for blending. And the other thing that we worked out was when we didn't have these, and we've only got these, I also worked out that the, the, the back end, the bit that you usually slot into the, is a really good as well because it's harder, right? So this is really, for larger areas like this, this is actually very good because it smooths the pigment. It pushes it around. That's all it does, see? So you can use the back, the back end for smoothing out and then use the, the front end for the tighter areas like this, right in there and in there. I'm not ready for that though there, not yet. So these are a good investment. Right, let's have another look. Now we've, we've put that color down, you see. Now I can go back in and I can add another layer of black. And this, this is gonna make all the difference. So circular motions, I can go quite in the middle bit. It's only the outside that I need to be a bit more careful. But you'll see it's like another generation of blackness. Do you want it solid, solid, opaque, 100% black? Then this is a great way of colouring in. See? There you go. It's good, isn't it? See how black that is now? And then you just, so you bring your other layer in. You don't have to press hard. It's going to look really nice because it will make the front really pop. 
There you go. Yes. So, I hope you like the idea of doing a doodling one of those 3D flowers. They're an old Victorian idea. Really beautiful. Dave. It's Dave again. He found that idea. It's really lovely. There you go. Good and black. There. You go. Look how solid that is now. Can you see that all right? It just takes time, doesn't it? it? Just takes time. That's all. Then we can blend it a bit more. Use a blending nib. Use the hard end for the larger area. Just push that pigment around. Cool. There. And the object of the exercise is to do this in all the areas. Look. It's going to look good when it's done. It's just not done yet. But there's no race. There's no race on this. I've got... Um, I've got the rest of my life to do this, you know. There we go. Nice. Because this is how I see this. I see this as therapy. That is exactly how I see this. It's, uh, it's my way of calming down. And I have. I've, in the time it's taken me, I can only speak for myself, in the time it's taken me to do this little bit of grey work, and this little bit of black work in the background, and I can already see the benefits of it. I know it's going to be beautiful when it's done. In that time, I've gone from having a banging headache and panicking to being really chilled, you know. And I believe if it works for me, then it really, it must work for you too, you know. It's just about because you do have to concentrate a little bit on it. That's the thing, you know, because you've got to, you don't want to go over the over the pictures, do you? So quite simply put, because you're staying away from that, you've got to concentrate a little bit because you don't want to just, you know, you're not just hosing the whole area down with black, are you? You, you want to be a little bit more careful. And so because in that, and in that carefulness, in that taking care and focusing, because I'm, I'm very focused on the tip of my black pen here, my pencil. I'm looking very carefully. This black pencil is in the tin of Faber-Castell polychromos that we sell. But, and yeah, I'm always banging on about Faber-Castell polychromos because I believe that they are amazing. But you do realise you could do this with any black pencil, really. You really could. And you know, here's another thing. If I were making a black sky and I wanted to put clouds in, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, I'm going for 100% opacity here. But because I've got the grey in the background, I could do a little landscape. You know, there are so many shades, 50 shades of grey, there are 500 shades of grey. You see? So it's entirely up to you whether you want a beautiful sort of um, a misty moon in the background. Do you see what I mean? There's so much scope. We're so lucky that this interests us, that this, that this turns us on, you know. We're so lucky that we're one, able to do this, and two, want to do this. 
there are so many, the vast majority of people are not interested in doing this kind of work and colouring in and being creative. So what do they do for sweet relief? What do they do for sweet relief, hey? See, to me, this is a really fantastic, really, fantastic that we can that we can calm down our minds by being creative, you know? Creativity guarantees sanity. I think it does. I really do. I really do. Cool, I could sit the whole day doing this, neck permitting. Nothing quite like it. There you go, look at that. What a difference, isn't it? You know? But you couldn't really get this with such ease if you didn't first go in with the light grey, the medium grey, and then outline the black. That's really the key for me, you know, for me. So there we go. I think I'll call it a day because I see my batteries flashing at me. <laughs> it's Thursday, it's sunny outside, and what are you going to do today? Have you got anything nice lined up? Hmm? Have you got anything nice lined up? Well, it's my dad's birthday tomorrow, and so in the afternoon I shall be heading over to celebrate his 85th birthday with him. And then other than that, I think I'm going to be picking and packing orders because they are piled high. And... Um, but that's okay. I'm grateful for the business. I'm grateful for the work. You know, it's a good problem to have, isn't it? Better than sitting, staring at the phone and wondering what happened. So yeah, busy is good. Busy is very good. Thank you. Uh, have a smashing weekend. And don't forget, Paul is on TV at uh, two o'clock this afternoon again. He'll be winding down that one day special on Create and Craft. Um, and then this weekend, no, it's definitely nose to the grindstone for us, but we'll be pacing ourselves, don't you worry. And then on Monday at 10 o'clock, you and I, if you'd like to join me, we'll be back in the shack, back in the shack at 10 o'clock, and I will be doodling one of those lovely pop-up birds because I think they're just, they're, they're delightful. You don't put them away, believe you me. I've got them everywhere. You don't put them away. And they hang beautifully too. So, so let's try that on Monday, shall we? And until then, uh, Stuart, thank you so much for your help. And thank you for keeping me company. Uh, I hope that all is well. And, uh, and I shall see you on Monday. I don't think I've forgotten anything. And if I have, I'll remember it as soon as I, as soon as I hang up in a minute. Lots of love to you. Be safe and, um, and take care now.